Monday. The late news now from Central. 200 people who lost their holidays with the collapse of a Shropshire travel company have been told they won't get their money back. Pineda holidays folded with debts of £100,000. Sylvia Bromley and Eileen Taylor from Wolverhampton saved all year for their holiday. They were due to leave for Spain with their husbands on Monday. But with the collapse of Pineda holidays, they've lost their chance to get away and a total of £1,800. Doctors had told Sylvia she needed two weeks in the sun following the recent death of her mother. Well, I feel very bitter, very, very bitter indeed. Plus the fact it isn't helping me, it me out the least. I've had a very hard year this year, we're looking after me mum. And now I need a break, this has happened. Eileen and Sylvia are two of 200 people who've lost their money. There's been no comment from Pineda. The director, Ray Cash, was not at his Telford office today, where phones went unanswered. A Warwickshire man is critically ill after being shot in the head in Sussex. Ronald Cook from Rugby was drinking in a pub at Hove when a man walked in and shot him. 39-year-old Ronald Cook is still critically ill after being gunned down in cold blood while drinking with a female companion at this pub in Hove. The gunman fired a single shot in what is understood to have been a jealous rage before fleeing into the street. The victim is now under police guard at Hurstwood Park Neurological Centre here in Haywards Heath, where he underwent emergency surgery last night. He's said to be giving grave cause for concern and relatives have travelled down from the Midlands to be at his bedside. Meanwhile, police are still anxious to trace 49-year-old Peter Russell from Hove in connection with the shooting. Police today made this appeal for him to come forward. Please come forward. Um, you know, we understand you can help us and we really would like to talk to you. A young mother has been murdered in Stoke-on-Trent. 29-year-old Kim Sykes, who had three children, had been strangled. She was found at her home by her mother today. Her three children were all at school. An investigation has been launched into how a sliver of glass got into a packet of Boots baby food in Derbyshire. This afternoon, seven-month-old Ben slept blissfully unaware of the scare his mother had when she gave him his morning breakfast. 18-year-old Bernadette had decided to give him a powdered fruit yoghurt meal. She made it in the usual way and young Ben seemed to be enjoying it. It wasn't until I gave him the last little bit and I put his juice into his mouth and I noticed some trickling of blood coming out of the side of his mouth and he started to choke and so I picked him up quick and it just all come out, out of his mouth and uh, I just panicked, ran into my friend uh, who's next door and uh, she held him for a while, I phoned the doctor and I found a little bit of uh, glass in his mouth. That's quite a big slither, isn't it? Well, yeah. yeah. And I was a little bit worried that uh, he might have swallowed some. I mean, you know, a big bit like that, he could have done anything. A short time ago, Boots in Nottingham, who market the powdered breakfast, said they took any complaint very seriously and were concerned that Bernadette had found glass in Ben's food. They would now investigate the matter fully. A school in Leicester has been forced to close after a group of travellers moved onto the playing fields. The decision was taken by governors after parents complained their youngsters were being intimidated. Just one week into the new term and lessons at Abbey Primary School in Leicester came to an abrupt halt today. The 700 pupils driven out by travellers. They arrived on the school playing field two weeks ago. Since then, says the school, some pupils have been threatened and intimidated and even had their dinner money stolen. There have been human excrements in the playgrounds, uh, our property has been broken into, toys uh, and things that we store in uh, sheds outside in the playgrounds have been taken away. We can't put up with this situation. The playing field campsite adjoins a playground which is now out of bounds to pupils. Teachers say it's simply not safe to let the children out while the travellers remain. Now, after an emergency meeting between parents, governors, the police and education officials, the school is to close. I, I support what the, the governor's action because they wouldn't take it unless they thought it was absolutely necessary for the safety of the children. The case of a Solihull teenager sentenced to 25 years for drug smuggling in Thailand has been taken to the European Parliament. Karen Smith was arrested at Bangkok Airport with her friend Patricia Carhill as they were about to board a plane to Europe. In their luggage, customs officials found nearly 30 kilograms of heroin, hidden inside shampoo and food containers. Now, three British members of the European Parliament are to put forward a motion calling for Thailand to review Karen's case. 
Her lawyer, Stephen Jacobi, who flew to Brussels yesterday, claims she was subjected to a show trial. He argues that she was blackmailed into pleading guilty to avoid execution after two senior Thai police officers publicly said she was innocent. And he claims the judge ignored crucial evidence in her favour. That's it for now. Our next bulletin is tomorrow morning, just before 10, from the newsroom tonight. A very good night. Central Weather, sponsored by Legal and General. I've got a feeling in me waters that tomorrow might be the last day of real summery weather for this year, so don't miss any of it if you can help it. Tonight first, though, temperatures down to 12, with clear skies to start with, but then more of that low cloud will be creeping back into the region during the early hours, so another cloudy, dull start to tomorrow morning, but slowly brightening up through the morning with lots of sunshine for most of us through the afternoon. More cloud about in the east of the region, so not such a brilliant day there. Northeasterly breeze might make it feel chilly, but temperatures still reaching 24 Celsius tomorrow, 75 Fahrenheit. All in all, yet another pretty good day to look forward to.